Hello everyone. This is Muhammad Wasim Khan, an instructor of your project planning and management course. Welcome to Learn with Wasim. I hope you all are doing well. As you know that in the previous lecture, we have discussed some of the important topics of lesson three, and those topics were related to the project identification, selection, and initiation. We have discussed project identification and selection. Let's see voice what we have discussed earlier. We have discussed the project identification. This may have been a that Mohtalib jo candidate projects hai, wo available hongi. Lekin ek organization un candidate projects ko identify kis tarah karta hai. To hamne usko pada, aur hamne kaha ki jo project identification hai, wo teen um, chizo ki uh, ko consider karne se hota hai. The first one was the proposed solution to the problems. The second one was capitalizing on opportunities. And the third one was responding to directives. After that, we have discussed four different steps of the project selection. That is how to select the project. So we had used uh, this, we have discussed step, uh, step one, step two, step three, and step four. Then we have, um, you know, uh, discussed a very important topic that, that is the project selection. कि अगर आपने बहुत सारे प्रोजेक्ट्स में से कुछ प्रोजेक्ट्स आपने सेलेक्ट किए तो उन प्रोजेक्ट्स में सॉरी प्रोजेक्ट्स को आइडेंटिफाई किए तो उन प्रोजेक्ट्स जो आपने आइडेंटिफाई किए हैं जो कि नंबर ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स होंगे उसमें से आपने कुछ सेलेक्ट करने हैं तो वो प्रोजेक्ट्स आप किस तरह सेलेक्ट करेंगे वो भी हमने डिस्कस किया एंड वी हैव डिस्कस डिफरेंट टेक्निक्स लाइक फोकसिंग ऑन ब्रॉड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नीड्स कैटेगराइजिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स Performing financial evaluation and using a weighted scoring model. फिर हमने बताया कि किस तरह organization need की base पे आप project को select कर सकते हैं, किस तरह आप project को categorize कर सकते हैं, और हमने ये भी discuss किया कि अगर आप financial evaluation की base पे कर रहे हैं, यानी budget की base पे या funding की base पे project सेलेक्ट करना चाहते हैं तो वो आप किस तरीके से कर सकते हैं और जिसके लिए हमने डिस्कस किया था नेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू एनालिसिस रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड पेबैक एनालिसिस एंड वी हैव डिस्कस ईच ऑफ दिस मेथड्स ब्रीफली वी हैव आल्सो डिस्कस ए वेटेड स्कोरिंग मॉडल और जिसमें मैंने आपको एक लैपटॉप की सिलेक्शन की एक एग्जांपल दी थी उस एग्जांपल से जस्ट वो एग्जांपल मैंने इसलिए दी थी कि आप समझ सकें कि हम वेटेड स्कोरिंग मॉडल के थ्रू लैपटॉप को किस तरह कंसीडर करते हैं तो एक खास क्राइटेरिया रखते हैं और उस क्राइटेरिया की बेस पे हम फिर مختلف प्रोजेक्ट्स की स्कोरिंग करते हैं और उसके जिसके ज्यादा वेटेज होता है तो उसके बेस पे हम उस प्रोजेक्ट को सेलेक्ट करते हैं सो वी हैव डिस्कस दिस थिंग वेरी क्लियरली is i told you about the quiz number one so let me remind you again that you will have a quiz on 11th march thursday 2021 for that quiz you have to go through um two chapters keenly uh that is chapter number one is introduction to the project management and chapter number two is organizational influences and project life cycle you can um you know um uh, Study these chapters from the Project Management Book of Knowledge. So today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is the project initiation. That is how to initiate the project. The initiating process group consists of those processes that are performed to define a new project or a new phase of an existing project by obtaining authorization. तो इनिशिएशन प्रोसेस ग्रुप में वो तमाम प्रोसेसेस मौजूद है कि जिसके थ्रू हम एक नए प्रोजेक्ट को या किसी एक ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोजेक्ट में एक नए फेज को जो है स्टार्ट करने के लिए कुछ ऑथराइजेशन करते हैं उसकी ठीक है और मैंने आपको बताया था कि वो ऑथराइजेशन जो है वो हम प्रोजेक्ट चार्टर की शक्ल में करते हैं 
یعنی پروجیکٹ چارٹر ہی جو ہے وہ ہمیں بتاتا ہے کہ یہ پروجیکٹ کو پروجیکٹ جو ہے وہ یا جو نیو پروجیکٹ ہیں وہ آتھورائز ہیں ٹھیک ہے نا آتھورائزیشن ہم لیتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے کس چیز کی دا انیشیل اسکوپ از ڈیفائنڈ انیشیل اسکوپ ڈیفائنڈ کیا جاتا ہے اس میں اینڈ انیشیل فائنینشیل ریسورسز آر پرمیٹڈ ٹھیک ہے تو کہ کیا اسکوپ ہے پروجیکٹ کے اندر کیا چیزیں ہوں گی اور کیا یا کون سی پروسیز اور ایکٹیویٹیز ہوں گی کون سی نہیں ہوں گی ٹھیک ہے اور کیا اس کی فائنینشیل کتنے ریسورسز اویلیبل ہیں تو یہ چیزیں جو ہے ہم اتھرائز کرتے ہیں اس کی بیس پہ جو پروجیکٹ میں ایکسٹرنل اور انٹرنل دونوں اسٹیک ہولڈرس انوالو ہوں گے وہ ہم جو ہے اس کو اس کو آئیڈینٹیفائی کرتے ہیں پروجیکٹ چارٹر میں اتھرائز کرتے ہیں ہم پروجیکٹ مینیجر ول بی سلیکٹڈ کہ کون سا پروجیکٹ مینیجر جو ہے اس کے لیے سلیکٹ کرنا ہے تو پروجیکٹ مینیجر اس کو ہم سلیکٹ کرتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے اور دا کلیئر ڈسکرپشن آف دی پروجیکٹ آبجیکٹو کار ڈیولپ اور پروجیکٹ آبجیکٹو جو ہیں اس کو کلیئرلی ہم ڈسکرائب کرتے ہیں تو یہ چار بیسک چیزیں ہیں کہ جس کو ہم اتھورائز کرتے ہیں کسی بھی ایپ پروجیکٹ کے لیے اور یہ سب کچھ پروجیکٹ انیشیشن کے اسٹیج پہ ہوتا ہے Initiating process uh, may be performed by organizational program or portfolio processes external to the project scope of the control. Okay? So, these uh, initiating processes are not only project ki under the team, but these are organizational program or portfolio processes ki dhu, jo ke outside the project scope. Hai, uski bhi hum kar sakte. Initiating process group include the following project management processes. that is developing the project charter and identifying the stakeholders so these are the two things that are involved in initiating process group now let's discuss the project charter how to develop the project charter so before going towards the developing of project charter let's define the project charter so what actually is a project charter project charter is a document that formally authorizes a project or a phase and document initial requirements that satisfy the stakeholders needs and expectations so project charter jo hai ye jo ki maine aapke pehle bhi discuss kiya tha ki ye ek document hota hai that actually authorizes the project okay in the form of satisfying the stakeholders needs and expectations and it actually presents the basic objectives or the main objective of the whole project develop project charter is the process of developing a project charter so develop project charter is actually is the name suggests it is actually a process of developing a project charter it is very simple it establishes a partnership between the performing organization and request organization or customer in the case of external projects so it is actually it actually establish a partnership a link between the per, or the organization who is performing uh, the project and the requesting organization like customer for example is the requesting organization okay so unki darmiyan ek partnership ban jati because the organization will perform the project okay and they will produce a product for the customers okay so that's why the partnership between the customers and or other stakeholders in organization is very important the approved project charter formally initiates the project so if you want to initiate the project i told you that you will have to approve the project charter okay and that is actually that gives an authorization to the project chartering a project links the project to the strategy and ongoing work of organization so jo agar aap project charter banate hain to iska matlab hai ki aapne project ko aap link kar rahe hain jo puri strategy ya planning hai uske sath so project ka jo work hai aap usko planning ke sath jo hai link kar rahe hain theek hai aur ye yahi cheez jo hai ye project charter show karti hai now as i told you uh, that we have um, throughout the project management we will have some inputs outputs and the tools or technique that will help to transform inputs into outputs okay so let's discuss the project charter 
uh, developing the project charter and we will discuss the inputs, tools and techniques and outputs of the project charter. Let's start with input first. So in inputs, you will have project statement of work, business case, agreements, enterprise environmental factors, organizational process assets. Tools and techniques that we will use here are expert judgment and facilitation techniques. And at the end, we will get the output, which is the project charter. Obviously, the main objective is developing a project charter. Now, project statement of work. Let's discuss the first of input. Project statement of work. As the name suggests, the statement of work is a description of products and services to be delivered by the project. So project statement of work kya hoti hai? Ye ek description hoti hai ki kon se products ya services ek project provide karega. Ek project kon se products or services ko deliver karega. Okay. For internal projects, the project initiator or sponsor provide the statement of work. Jabke external projects ke liye, the statement of work can be received from customers as part of a bid document. Other inputs include the business case. Business case provides the necessary information from a business standpoint. Yani, uh, it actually gives us the business point of view, the information regarding the business point of view for a particular project. So, we have a project ki business uh, point of view. We have to say that we have to invest in the market, we have to say that we have to importance in the business, and we have to say that 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 the requesting organization or customer in the case of external projects may write the business case. Okay, let's talk about the third one, which is agreement. Agreements are used to define initial intentions for a project. Okay, aapne MOU ka naam suna hoga. Isko hum memorandums of understanding kehte hain. Ya service level agreement, SLAs hum isi kehte hain. Ya letter of agreements. ये एक्चुअली ऐसी चीजें होती हैं जो कि आपकी जो दो या जो डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं उनकी जो रिलेशनशिप है और उनको या उनकी जो एग्रीमेंट्स है उसको शो करती है तो जो एमओयूज हैं या जो डिफरेंट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स की किस्म में है लाइक सर्विस लेवल एग्रीमेंट्स और द लेटर ऑफ एग्रीमेंट्स और लेटर ऑफ इंटेंट दीस टाइप ऑफ एग्रीमेंट्स एक्चुअली शो the link of different stakeholders, the agreement between different stakeholders of the project. So typically a contract is used when a project is being performed for an external customer. As we have discussed, enterprise environmental factors, these are the factors that actually are not under control of the project team. For example, governmental or industrial standards or organizational infrastructure or the government instability, okay, uh, etc. Political instability, I would say, okay, or the marketplace conditions, okay, and uh, the, the extreme conditions like the COVID-19 that have already affected uh, a number or I would say through almost all of the businesses, okay. So that's uh, these are the enterprise environmental factors that will be that may uh, be the input um, you know to this uh, particular process of developing project charter. The last one is organizational process assets, and you know organization process assets includes the organization uh, related uh, or the project related processes, the policies, and the standardized process definitions, different templates that we use for the project charter or historical information and lessons that are learned, um, you know, based on the knowledge. Okay, the tools and techniques that we can use uh, for developing the project charter are expert judgment. The first one is expert judgment. So expert judgment, uh, in expert judgment, judgment and expertise is applied to any technical and management detail during this process. So if you want to develop the project charter, you will have to um, get an, uh, you know, a, a, a point of view from experts or judges. So the judges, uh, judgments and expertise 
are actually applied to any technical um, uh, details in the process of developing the project charter. Uh, such expertise is provided by any group or individual uh, with specialized knowledge and training, training, including other units within the organization, including consultants, including stakeholders, um, stakeholders mean consumers or customers or sponsors, professional and technical associations, industrial industry groups, uh, subject matter experts, and project management office. The output will be the project charter. So the project charter documents the business needs, current understanding of customer needs, and the new product service or result that it is intended to satisfy, such as uh, project purpose or justification, that is one of the need, okay, for a project. Mergeable project objective, obviously that is the most important point of the project, that is the project objective or goals and this related success criteria. So these things are also, uh, you know, documented in the project charter. Then the high level requirement, high level project description, high level risk that, you know, the project may face. Summary of the milestone schedule, the, like, you know, as I told you that uh, we can use the giant gain chart, okay, uh, you have, or other different charts for, uh, you know, scheduling the project or different activities. And as you know that, uh, I think in the uh, first or second lesson, we have discussed that each, um, uh, that the end of each phase or process uh, is called the milestone. So we can get the, uh, an idea of the milestone of each and every activity of the project in the project charter. Then summary of the budget, okay, that is assigned to the particular project, the project approval requirements, and assign project manager responsibility and authority level. Now, uh, identifying this, so, so as I told you that in project initiation, we have two, um, you know, um, output. The first one is the project charter. So we have discussed the project charter. Uh, now we are going to discuss the second one, and that is to identify the stakeholders. So project stakeholders are the persons and organizations, such as customers, sponsors, the performing organization, and the public that are actively involved in the project and whose interest may be positively or negatively affected by the execution or completion of the project. Identify stakeholder is the process of identifying all the project stakeholders. Stakeholders may be at different levels within the organization and may possess different authority levels or maybe external to the performing organization. So as I told you that we can have a number of uh, stakeholders like this, customers, the sponsors, the investors, the project managers, um, the, the, the functional managers, the project management office, the project management team, and so on and so forth. So these are um, some of the stakeholders of the project, okay? So identifying stakeholder uh, uh, is actually a process in which we identify the, the, the basic uh, stakeholders of a particular project or the people who are involved um, in a particular, whose interests are involved in that particular project. So stakeholders maybe have, or have given, the stakeholders may um, be at different levels within the organization. Okay, uh, they will have different authority. Because investors ki alag authority hoti hai. Obviously, the project manager will have a separate authority. Uh, or you know the, the, the authority of the project uh, other project team may lower uh, than the authority of the project manager so the, um, by this i mean that the stakeholders may be at different levels it is critical for project success to identify the stakeholders early in the project and to analyze their levels of interest expectations importance and influence now for identifying the stakeholders, we can have some inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. So the first input is the project charter. And we have discussed that actually project charter provides information about internal and external parties involved in and affected by the project. Okay, then procurement documents. 
procurement documents mean that if a project is the result of a procurement activity or is based on an established contract, the parties in the contract are key project stakeholders. Suppliers should also uh, be considered as part of the project stakeholder list. So, kya aapko jo pro, uh, jo, jo, um, different uh, project ki jo, jo, jo cheeze supply karte hai, ठीक है जो जहां से भी मटेरियल या ह्यूमन रिसोर्स वगैरह आते हैं तो ये जो है ये सब कुछ आपका प्रोक्योरमेंट डॉक्यूमेंट में जो है वो रिकॉर्ड किया जाता है ठीक है एंटरप्राइज एनवायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स जिस तरह हमने पढ़ा कि यहां स्टेक होल्डर्स में भी वी हैव टू इन आइडेंटिफाइंग द स्टेक होल्डर्स वी विल हैव टू कंसीडर द अनदर इनपुट एंड दैट इज द एंटरप्राइज एनवायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स और स्पेशली दो इन्वायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स जो है इसमें कंसीडर करती हैं प्रोसेस के दौरान एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और कंपनी कल्चर एंड स्ट्रक्चर है क्योंकि दूसरा गवर्नमेंटल और इंडस्ट्री स्टैंडर्ड्स या रेगुलेशन है सेकेंड अनदर वन इज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रोसेस एसिड एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रोसेस एसिड जो कि आइडेंटिफाइंग स्टेक होल्डर प्रोसेस के लिए इम्पोर्टेंट है तो वो हमारे पास है स्टेक होल्डर रजिस्टर टैंपलेट्स lessons that are learned from the previous projects okay and stakeholders registered from the previous projects the tools and techniques that we uh, can use for identifying the stakeholders are um, you know stakeholder analysis so systematically stakeholder analysis is actually a systematically gathering and analyzing quantitative and qualitative information to determine whose interest should be taken into account throughout the project it actually identifies the interests and expectations and influence of the stakeholders and relates them to the purpose of the project stakeholder analysis generally follows three steps so for if you want to analyze the stakeholder we can have three steps for that the first is identify all the potential project stakeholders and relevant information for example you know the stakeholders roles the, the departments they are involved in their interests their knowledge levels their expectations and their influence levels key stakeholders include anyone in um, decision making or management role who is impacted by the project outcome the sponsor the project manager and the primary customer tools and techniques uh, uh, we are uh, you know as you know that we are discussing the uh, stakeholder analysis so the stake the second step in stakeholder analysis is to identify the potential impact or support each stakeholder could generate if stakeholder ka product jo ke project pe kya future mein impact hoga theek hai aur wo kis tarah support kar sakta hai theek hai to ye aapne identify karna hai and it is important to uh, prioritize the key stakeholders uh, to ensure the efficient use of the effort uh, to communicate and manage their expectations okay so there are multiple classification models available including but not limited to power grid or interested power influence or interest influence influence or impact grid and salient model so these are something we are not going to uh, very deep into these uh, different models okay uh, but inshallah um, we will discuss the relevant topics in the coming lectures okay uh, the step 3 is assess how key stakeholders are likely to react or respond in various situations in order to plan how to influence them to enhance their support and mitigate potential negative impacts so just step three hai isme hum ye dekhte hain ki kis tarah jo stakeholders hain wo respond karenge different situations ko within the project theek hai aur kis tarah wo unko plan kiya jata hai aur wo kis tarah affect karenge ya impact hoga unka kis tarah kisi project pe to kya wo aur aur jo negative impact hai usko kis tarah reduce kiya jaye to ye planning process mein hota hai Can I get power, interest, or grid um, interest? Up. Uh, let me uh, just briefly uh, discuss it with you. If you look at it, then vertical axis we have from low to high power. And uh, uh, low to high interest is what we have. 
एक्सेस पे जो है वो मौजूद है अगर यहाँ पे देखें तो अगर हमारे पास फॉर एग्जाम्पल एट हम लो लो से स्टार्ट करते हैं तो लो इंटरेस्ट हो किसी स्टेक होल्डर का और लो पावर हो उसका तो वो उसका मिनिमम एफर्ट ये होता है कि वो सिर्फ मॉनिटर कर सकता है ठीक है ए बी सी डी ई दीज आर डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर ठीक है तो कुछ स्टेक होल्डर्स तो हमारे पास ऐसे आएंगे इस इस एरिया में जिनके इंटरेस्ट भी कम है ठीक है उस प्रोजेक्ट में और जिनके पास जो पावर है तो वो भी कम है ठीक है इसके अलावा अगर आप देखें तो जिनके जिनका इंटरेस्ट ज्यादा है लेकिन उनके पास पावर कम है तो वो क्या करते हैं कि वो इन्फॉर्म किया जाए उनको इन्फॉर्म किया जाए ये प्लानिंग के दौरान सब कुछ होता है कि वो जो है स्टेक होल्डर्स जो जिनका इंटरेस्ट में अगेन एक्सप्लेन कर रहा हूँ कि जिनका इंटरेस्ट कम है जिनका पावर भी कम है तो उनको मोनिटर किया जाए ठीक है लेकिन जिनके इंटरेस्ट ज्यादा है लेकिन उनके पास पावर कम है तो हम उसको क्या करते हैं हम उसको जो है इन्फॉर्म रखते हैं हाँ जिन स्टेक होल्डर्स के पास पावर ज्यादा है और इंटरेस्ट उनका कम है तो हम उनको सेटिस्फाई रखते हैं वी नीड टू सेटिस्फाई देम कीप देम सेटिस्फाइड ठीक है और जो स्टेक होल्डर्स जिनकी जो है हाई पावर है उनके पास और उनका इंटरेस्ट भी प्रोजेक्ट में हाई है तो उनको हम मैनेज जो मैनेज जो है वो क्लोजली मैनेज करते हैं ठीक है सो दिस इज हाउ वी आर प्लानिंग फॉर यू नो स्टेक होल्डर्स आइडेंटिफाइंग स्टेक होल्डर्स एंड कीपिंग देम सेटिस्फाइंग एंड कंट्रोलिंग देम सो यहाँ पे आप उनको कंट्रोल किस तरह करते हैं ये आप देख सकते हैं Then the expert judgment we have already discussed in the previous topics as well. In the previous topic that is the project charter, ठीक है तो उसमें भी हमने discuss किया कि expert judgment जो है ये group of individuals होते हैं यानी इसमें जो group of individuals हैं जो कि experts हैं judges हैं वो judgments देते हैं वो अपने experience की base पे कुछ decision making करते हैं और जो specialized training और knowledge जो है एक खास उनकी खास सब्जेक्ट एरिया में होता है और उसके बेस पे वो अपनी एक्सपर्टीज या जजमेंट्स देते हैं तो उसके बेस पे आप जो है स्टेक होल्डर्स को आइडेंटिफाई करते हैं तो यहाँ पे जो एक्सपर्ट जजमेंट है वो स्टेक होल्डर्स की आइडेंटिफिकेशन के बेस पे होती है कि आप स्टेक होल्डर्स कौन से स्टेक होल्डर्स आपने आइडेंटिफाई करने हैं कौन से स्टेक होल्डर्स को आपने सेलेक्ट करने हैं हर एक स्टेक होल्डर की क्या क्या यानी डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स की क्या क्या रिक्वायरमेंट हो सकती है उनको आपने किस तरह मीट करने हैं उनके रिक्वायरमेंट्स को तो वो सारी चीजें जो है यहाँ एक्सपर्ट जजमेंट के थ्रू होता है ठीक है तो इसमें हमारे पास डिफरेंट लोग होते हैं सीनियर मैनेजमेंट भी होती है होते हैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के अदर यूनिट्स भी इसमें इन्वॉल्व होते हैं जो की स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं वो भी इसमें इन्वॉल्व हो सकते हैं प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर्स भी हो सकते हैं ठीक है या जो हम जो सब्जेक्ट हम लेते हैं जो हमारा मेन एरिया है उसके एक्सपर्ट्स भी हो सकते हैं ठीक है इंडस्ट्री के ग्रुप या कंसल्टेंट्स भी हम ले सकते हैं बाहर से या कुछ प्रोफेशनल एंड टेक्निकल एसोसिएशन जो है वो भी एक्सपर्ट ओपिनियन या जजमेंट जो है वो दे सकते हैं आउटपुट्स क्या होंगी स्टेक होल्डर्स की वो हमारे पास जो जो आइडेंटिफाइंग स्टेक होल्डर के एक आउटपुट जो हमारे पास है वो स्टेक होल्डर रजिस्टर है और रजिस्टर में आ, हम क्या करते हैं वट वी एक्चुअली डू इन रजिस्टर इन रजिस्टर भी एक्चुअली रिकॉर्ड the description of something so if we are talking about the stakeholder registration then that mean that we will uh, uh, record uh, everything regarding the stakeholder or the basic things regarding the stakeholders okay so uh, stakeholder register contain all details related to the stakeholders including but not limited to like uh, identification information for example uh, you know i i'm right now um going to tell you that what actually stakeholder register contains so it contain the identification information such as nam of the stakeholder the organization position of their stakeholder the location their role in the project and their contact information stakeholder register may also include the assessment information like major requirements the main expectations from those stakeholders Potent, their potential influence or impact on the project and the phase in the life cycle in which they are mostly interested in okay and uh, 
the project stakeholder, uh, sorry, the stakeholder register includes the stakeholder classification as well, whether they are internal stakeholder or external stakeholder, where they are supporter to our project uh, of our project, or they are neutral to our project, or they are resistor, um, you know, to our project. Everything is actually um, aided or recorded uh, into the stakeholder register. The second thing had, or the second output that we actually um, gain in uh, or achieve in identifying the stakeholder process is the stakeholder management strategy. The stakeholder management strategy defines an approach, okay, a method to increase the support and minimize the negative impact of stakeholders. So obviously, different stakeholders will have uh, different uh, different um, you know, uh, point of views regarding your project. One stakeholder may have uh, some, um, may support your uh, project and may have positive impact on your project, but uh, another stakeholder, uh, but the same stakeholder will have negative impact on your project as well. Any ex stakeholder, who is a project, he is support me because I said positive view, he is a negative impact view. So, what is the stakeholder management strategy? We have to say that the negative impacts are going to minimize them and the support is going to enhance them. Key stakeholders who can significantly impact the project. Okay? उसको हम जो है वो कंसीडर करते हैं यानी वो स्टेकहोल्डर जिनका इंपैक्ट ज्यादा है ठीक है इंटरेस्ट ज्यादा है प्रोजेक्ट पे तो उनको हम जो है ज्यादा कंसीडर करते हैं लेवल ऑफ पार्टिसिपेशन इन द प्रोजेक्ट डिजायर फॉर ईच आइडेंटिफाइड स्टेकहोल्डर के स्टेकहोल्डर जो है वो उस किस लेवल का उसका पार्टिसिपेशन है प्रोजेक्ट में लो पार्टिसिपेशन है उसके प्रोजेक्ट में या हाई लेवल पार्टिसिपेशन है ठीक है तो ये भी हम स्ट्रेटजी में कंसीडर करते हैं और जो स्टेकहोल्डर ग्रुप्स हैं और जो उनकी मैनेजमेंट है उनको भी हम अपने स्टेकहोल्डर मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटजी में कंसीडर करते हैं तो बेसिक जो हमारा आप यहां पे अगर आप इस टेबल में देखें तो स्टेकहोल्डर फॉर एग्जांपल पिशावर डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी कमेटी है ये एक स्टेकहोल्डर थी ठीक है अच्छा अब इसका इंटरेस्ट क्या है प्रोजेक्ट में ठीक है तो वो हमने देखना है उनकी रिक्वायरमेंट्स क्या है ठीक है assessment of impact क्या होगा तो उसका एक खास जो है उसकी हम इसको हम करते हैं नाम देते हैं और फिर जो है potential strategies for gaining support or reducing obstacles कि जो आप उनका जो support है उसको enhance किया जाए और उनकी जो negative impact है उसको हम reduce किया जाए तो उसके लिए potential strategies क्या हैं तो strategy तो ये है कि ऐसी strategy हम रखें कि जिससे PDA की जो requirements है उसको हम meet कर सकें तो ओवरऑल जो प्रोजेक्ट्स सॉरी जो स्टेक होल्डर मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटजी है उसमें हम यही करते हैं कि हम स्टेक होल्डर्स को मैनेज करते हैं कि किस तरह स्टेक होल्डर को मैनेज किया जाए तो किसका सिर्फ यही जो है वो मकसद है सो अंटिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस व्हाट इज प्रोजेक्ट चार्टर व्हाट इज डेवलप प्रोजेक्ट चार्टर प्रोसेस व्हाट आर इट्स इनपुट्स टू द टेक्निक्स एंड आउटपुट्स वी हैव डिस्कस द प्रोजेक्ट स्टेक होल्डर्स uh, we have discussed what is identi uh, identifying st uh, stakeholders process and what are its inputs, uh, tools and techniques and outputs. We have discussed the power and trust uh, grid as well and the stakeholder register and how to manage the uh, stakeholder management, uh, how to manage the stakeholders. Okay, so we have discussed all of them. Uh, let me tell you something very important. Um, is you know um, that um, most of the students um, give me a feedback and some of the students ask me uh, that please uh, discuss it in um, Urdu as well. So I will try to, um, you know, discuss, um, you know, each chapter um, in a hybrid way, like, you know, English plus Urdu, I'll try it. Um, but um, I, <clears throat> sorry. I have uh, just reduced my uh, speed of teaching. Uh, so um, I think if I don't use Urdu, then it would be easy for you to, uh, you know, cage my uh, words in English because I'm teaching you um, a little, with a little, you know, a slow speed. So uh, thank you for uh, having me. And uh, if you have any questions regarding this particular um, a lecture, you can please ask me uh, or you can contact me on my email 
uh, mwkhan32598 outlook.com or you can you know text me as well uh, on uh, 03059058242 please um, uh, join my youtube channel so that you can uh, and and uh, press the bell icon so that you can get notifications when i upload a new video uh, it will be very easy for you to uh, you know um, access those videos and the channel of uh, youtube channel or the facebook page uh, is uh, named with learn with possible so thank you uh, that's all uh,